My name is Robert Jemison, and my practice is Robert Jemison Architects in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, I have Robert Jemison. And if his face looks familiar, that means you are like me and that you only watch TV when you can learn something, especially with your family, and you don't have to worry about any curse words or somebody humping on somebody in front of your two daughters. Um, and that's why, because your homemade perfect is where you may see him. And he's, I'm sure, has done other TV shows out there in the UK that we're not even allowed to see because of country codes and licensing deals, nonsense stuff. But he's gonna give us the game on how he got to be this great architect where if you guys haven't seen the show, you have to see how this man thinks. I mean, it, it's taken our, our, our thinking cap to a whole new level. So Robert, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thanks very much, Henry. And thank you. That's a very generous introduction. No, I, I tell you, I, I'm like you. We were talking off air, people. And Robert said he doesn't watch his own show, you know, and I'm like, wow. And we rarely watch TV, but we want to learn how to build homes because we're in the process of looking for land and land. And you have just the way they should always pick you. I mean, tell me, how, how did you how did you even start? Because I, I just I got one to start from ground one. How did you start building and designing homes? Um, well, of course, I went through the, the traditional um, university education model. Um, which was which is seven years. There's a three three year undergrad, year out in practice, two year postgrad, and then of course there's a year a few years before your chartership. So about ten years and you're a chartered architect. But then that's only the beginning of the process. And then you you know you need experience, so you end up spending a couple of years maybe working for for someone who kind of inspires you, etc. So it takes some time to become a qualified architect. But in terms of getting then through, um, I mean I was quite I was kind of. I'm kind of an ambitious in a, in a way that I understand my creativity and I just want to build and create create stuff I want to, I want to create ideas you know and I think architecture is a f fantastic subject or course because what it does is it is it um it forces you to look at the world around you you know to understand the world that we live in which is more than just material and detail you know it's it's the colors it's all the sciences you know, it's um, psychology, philosophy. It's, you know, it's the, the experience in other realities beyond the physical reality, if you get what I'm saying, you know? So mm -hmm. the journey beyond that and the other kind of places is also a way of reflecting and understanding our own experience with the world, okay? But um, after I, I, I graduated from college, I then established my own practice after, after, after working for a short time for an, another company because I wanted to get into building my own, my own, my own um, projects. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I spent a couple of years in, in, in Belfast with that practice and I was starting to get kind of um, commissions and recognized and my work was getting published and I was winning awards. Uh, and then I decided to kind of transfer to London. So I relocated, had an idea within four weeks, I was set up in London. I had my own studio. I, and, uh, you know, it was a it was a big move, but life is short. It's just a lap, you know. And so I I I, I worked in London, and then I mean, again, the traditional model for the design practice is to move on to bigger projects, more public public buildings, museums, theaters, schools. You know, those kind of buildings that kind of can really you, you know beyond the residential, you know. But then it was two thousand and nine, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. The, the global, you know, financial cr um, crash, let's call it, right? Yeah. Not, not a collapse, not yet, but a crash, okay? And, um, and, that, and I had to close my practice. I was employing uh, a couple of students, ex-students of mine, a great Belgian architect and a, and, a, and a Northern Irish architect who were employed with me in London. But to wrap up my practice, I had, it took me about maybe eight months and I, had to, I was working then part-time on a building side as a you know, um, just, you know, to actually earn more money. 
to close my practice, right? So I had, it was really strange because I was w- working all the, you know, weekends and every hour to build my, my practice and my projects. And all of a sudden I found myself, you know, laboring on a building site to, to, to pay for the practice then to come to an end because I had purchased a one-way ticket to get out of uh, Europe, to get out of the West, right? And I, I previously spent a couple of years working with a Vedic and Indian community. I designed a temple and a monastery, all um, based around ancient Indian um, texts, the translations of volume 12 and 13 of the Mahamatam, which was all about Vastu Shastra, which is essentially, you know, the, the, the Indian ancient science of building, okay? Spatial planning. So it was natural for me to get that one-way ticket to India. And I did on the 16th of September, 2009, my the next chapter of my life began and it was only through that following you know year i spent i spent the following six years essentially as a nomad because i wanted to explore the world i wanted to understand different cultures different peoples how how people just live and be and exist and dwell and all those things you know and how they build and consider space and understand environment and what's important and and really the conclusion of that where I'm at now is that architecture needs to support a secondary, it needs to almost dissolve. The best architecture dissolves. You don't even see it because it allows relationships with other or with yourself to exist yeah. and is principle in that relationship, you know? So I, I then traveled to India and that was the beginning of a whole other exploration. I want to go so deep into your creative process, but I want to make sure I, I don't miss anything and the way you create and anybody who has seen your designs, could school even teach you that? That nope. seems to be. So how important is it that you even go to school? Like, could school be don't like. Don't, I say, no, don't do it. I say, you know, kids, don't go to university. It's a waste of money. You, you will become a debt slave. You don't want to become a debt slave. Don't go to university. The education system is not worth it. What you learn in university is not worth it. Now with, now with YouTube or social media or a podcast, you can learn whatever you want. And it costs nothing but a Wi-Fi plug, whatever, you know. So I'd say don't go to university. It's not worth it. There's people in university, dare I say this, who are academics, petrified of losing their position because that's all they know. And as we know with COVID, universities are just going that way. So they're not going to exist anyway. And the substandard education model is coming to an end. And I say substandard in, the, in schools of architecture. And that's kind of a... A, a sweeping statement, but in my experience of schools of architecture, and I think what's interesting is that I, I believe the whole model of Western teaching is a bit kind of contrived or, or perhaps contrived, or as, as I would call it, it has lost its, you know, its evolutionary trajectory has been impacted or diverted, right? In terms of what's natural. What is important to self and spirit and being and all those things that we are, okay? So I think that, you know, mainstream education doesn't support that. I mean, it was, who was it? It was um, Mark Twain who said, never let um, schooling get in the way of your education, right? Don't let schooling get in the way of your education. Tertiary level as well, don't get into debt, okay? Don't f- keep yourself as free as possible, you know, from... from uh, from all this so i i say at the moment don't go to university the world is in a place that is there's a whole paradigm shift into something that's and what will emerge i'm optimistic that it will be more wholesome the pendulum will swing and we will be in a whole other world that we don't we can't even imagine now i mean it's you know but i'm kind of in my work i kind of um you know, kind of trying to philosophize on what that or theorize on what that might be. And even in my consultations with clients, I'm saying to them, listen, pause, don't do anything. Let's think about it. Don't get yourself in debt. What's your budget? Maybe think about paying off. You know, so it's even a different way of practicing only because of what's happened now with this COVID. Now, another thing I must say is that Western, the Western model, right? The Western model of education comes from, well, the architecture comes from the state of Western civilization, right? And which is the Greeks and the Romans, okay? Well, but whenever you, I traveled and spent time in indigenous kind of parts of the planet, right? Particularly in, in, in India and Asia. But I, I, when I was in India, I purchased a motorbike because I wanted to get away from the, from the I'd never been on, a, on the road 
on a motorbike and experience on a motorbike, you know, in motocross, but never on the road. And I bought a motorbike in India to get away from people. I wanted to get away from Westerners. I wanted to kind of explore these ancient temples that were maybe 120 Ks up a dirt track where you would meet two, you know, um, uh, you know, Babas who were kind of holding, you know, this temple. But, But my point is that what you do, or what I realized is that the West, right, and, and, and how I realized this is whenever I was tra- traveling down the kind of West Coast of, of, of India and, and I had a, a hammock and I was, I was, you know, hanging up in trees and, you know, just sleeping under the stars, but you would meet a lot of people, but we hadn't the same, you know, we, the only way means of communication in my, well, how I kind of communicate with them was through drawing. And I would have a stick on the sand and I would start to draw Ireland where I was from. And then, of course, it was quite big in the map. And then, you know, the UK, and then, you know, you would draw, you know, Europe and the outline and you, you know, work your way through the plant and then you would draw India and it was huge over here. And you would, and, but you would realize that, that Europe is actually really quite small, but yet our education, right, teaches us that this is, you know, this is the world we live in. It's not, it is not. And that's why I guess it's impacted on, on my on my practice on how I think about space because I think that living in these boxes, it comes from a, a you know a, a tradition of architectural practice and teaching which is not supportive of spirit, well-being, doesn't have health, doesn't have kind of you know the humanity at its center. Can, can you talk about that? Because I was reading Seth Godwin. Um, wrote in um, his, his blog and a book, and he talked about how a front yard is just a luxury. Most people don't even use their front yard. And so what are we missing in the West? Is it just the connection to even just our neighbor? Because if you go to India or you go to Africa, you know your neighbor. They might even come eat with you if they smell something cooking. Right. Community. Community, I mean, if you look at the kind of, in terms of, I mean, the reason why places like, you know, uh, medieval, you know, cities or villages or towns in parts of Europe and the hilltops of Italy or whatever, right, are really kind of um, become, you know, attractors for, 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 for people going on holiday to explore these places because of what it makes them feel like, right? And it's, it's not only the scale, because it feels more personal, more intimate, right? There's an intimate scale in this type of of urban planning yet you know as we as when you know of, of course populations grow technology expands industrial revolution i mean look at at you know north america you know the cities are planned on the grid and arguably it the, the pedestrian is forgotten i mean i remember i, I spent a, a bit of time in, in florida you know and wow i mean there is no community like social Social centers you have to drive everywhere to get to. You know, the sense of community doesn't really exist. It's always about protecting your land, you know. Um, and it's, it's just a different way that we've evolved. I, I, I call these kinks in our, you know, in our evolutionary trajectory because that, that kink was brought on by the, you know, the birth of the motor car. And then kind of, you know, the cities were planned around, you know, the, you know this grid form. It was not really organized around the idea of how we live, how we want to um, commune together, you know, what that means, you know, um, personal space, you know, or collective space. Certainly, you know, I think that, I, yeah, I, I just think that, I mean, it is what it is, you know, and, and that's why I guess we're so kind of, you know, I mean, even, even pushing us on to kind of social media sites and where we have our communities there, because we don't have them around us, even family. I think, you know, the natural way that a family exists is all together. When I was traveling in India, I was often asked, where's your mother and father? I'm saying they're, they're at home. Uh, and the response was, why are you here? Why are you here? You should be at home looking after them. You should be at home, you know, and, and they all live together and they grow as a family, da, 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 you know, that's my community, you know, and that is the, 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 and the energy that sh- is about energy. I mean, life force energy and the sharing of that. And, you know, whereas in the West, right, we've evolved in a way that has another, uh, you know, there's, an, there's another purpose. There's another way of living. And 
we don't, uh, most people, I, you know, it's not conducive to health, well-being, you know, uh, which is evident in the populations in the West. Now, with all of that, you could write a whole series of books on that. But any, any plans on putting a book and putting the architecture and the, the soul into it? I mean, you could even structure your book different if you wanted to go so far. But so people can read what they're missing, because what you've seen, very few people in the West, even if they've seen it, they haven't um, they really embraced it. Well, the thing is, it's because I traveled. I, I was already a trained architect, right? I already had my own practice. I already had a way of thinking and theorizing and practicing and building. And, you know, so I already ha had that before I, 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 you know, I traveled proper. I mean, I traveled, you know, and you know, during that time previous, but, but but when I left for India, I was going up, like I, I had no agenda. I wasn't coming back. I didn't know where I was going. I, I was just letting the universe unfold, right? And I'll tell you what, when you let the universe unfold, the opportunities or the experiences that you have will allow you to realize what university, or sorry, what universe is about. Really, it allows you to kind of, you know, have these experiences that are so transcendent, perhaps, you know, it makes you think that, you know, maybe, you know, just journeying, you know, is the way we should be. Like, naturally, we should be nomadic people, naturally, you know. Um, but of course, you know, we, we, we are born into, a, you know, a culture. We are born into a paradigm. We, we accept everything as it is, as normal, as the way we should be. We accept our housing um, types. We accept, you know, I mean, all of it, all of, you know, all, all of it until we start to question it. And unfortunately, well, I mean, you can see, I think people are starting to question everything more. And I think that it's just going to lead to a shift. And, you know, the age of Aquarius at the beginning of this year and, and how that shift will, you know, how that is the, the knowledge bearer. And I think things are going to start to kind of, um, you know, kind of evolve into something that is more appropriate for the way and means we should be be living. I mean, in terms of like talking about books or anything, it seems that, you know, and I, of course I've, I've, I've thoughts about this and I, and I started a process on online on my, on my, um, you know, Instagram about anybody who wants to kind of, you know, I'll start a library, library of ideas. That was at the beginning of, that was March, 2021. I've, I've, I've I think I've, uh, over a hundred anyway projects i've got you know um i'd say i've got 300 hours of design conversations about projects and sketch and so it's you know there's a hundred episodes if you're home made perfect type kind of work because everything is unique everything is individual everything is tailored on the understand the person etc etc you know so um uh yeah but, but the writer book takes time Okay, and, and I, I've been I've engaged with uh, I mean I've I've been approached by by uh, a, a, a literary agency in London asking me if I would write this book about my ideas. And I'm like, well, I'm busy. Um, I've got lots of ideas. I'll start the process and I start to kind of you know write. I've 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 written a couple of chapters, you know, but um, still, I think the the world is transitioning so quickly that. Books, yes, we can. We enjoy reading books, and I, 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 I don't do kind of um, Kindles or things like that. I enjoy physically reading books, but I think, in terms of sharing knowledge, this is the way to do it. This is a platform, whether it's you know a podcast or if you have a channel or some sort. I think that's a way to share information because things just move so fast, and you know, and we're evolving so quickly. You know what's crazy about that? And this, you know, I have more listeners than I have watchers. But for history's sake, like that, the algorithm could change and people could maybe want to learn and go deeper into, I'm not asking you how much your net worth is. That's no one's business, in my opinion. I'm asking you, how do you feel? But even now, when I watch YouTube, I'm watching them at 0 0.15, 1 0.5, or, because stuff, stuff. And then I have to tell myself, I actually, I want to hear that cadence. That normal, like it's a conversation, yeah. and and let me slow things down because mm -hmm. if not, we'll just be, you know, full of knowledge, full of information, full of money, but yeah. we die full. I want to die empty. I want to yeah. give and do more giving, more yeah. living. Yeah. If I don't ask this question, I think I'll get in trouble by my eleven-year-old. 
what does it take for you to design a home, you know, worldwide? Because you could name your price now. I mean, you have TV, you have so many projects you mentioned. Listen, I, I, listen, I don't make money. That is the truth of it. I mean, like before this chat, we talked about, you know, other, you know, um, crypto and things like that, you know, but I don't like, I had a conversation I, I, uh, or an email from exchange there this morning from someone who I, you know, I charge 75 pounds for them to register with me on my website. To, uh, we then invite information from them. I assess it and we, you know, we get through the whole process for 75 quid, right? hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and then we, ch and then I charge 400 plus VAT, 400, right? $500, right? Plus, you know, I, I bet. Okay. Um, to do a consultation, 90 minute consultation, right? That's nothing. I, okay. It is, it is for, for a lot of people, some money, but you cannot put a price on an idea. You can't buy it, but I want to reach out to people who need it. You're living in building here, having real problems in their. I mean, people come to me. It's really interesting, and I'm doing consultations. Yeah, and uh, I feel sometimes I feel well. The answer is not well. The answer is not always architecture. The answer could be move to Florida, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. The answer could be get a divorce, right? It really could. Or if, a, a better example might be there was a um, there was a couple who wanted to extend the property to give the, their son their teenage son, his own space. And then they wanted to kind of, after he left the house, they wanted to travel. So the solution would be buy yourself an RV, park in the backyard. That's your son's living space. Whenever he goes, drive up. You know, that's your that's your vehicle, right? So it's about architecture. And well, and, I mean, of course, architecture, building is about building. But as Buckminster Fuller said, the great engineer architect, um, the difference between architecture and building is an understanding of the universe, right? And I feel in my work, I, I try and understand the universe of the individual and then apply my own experiences. I mean, I'm talking about my own experiences plus all of the past life kind of, you know, instinct. That's your instinct, right? You're feeling about projects. You, you feel your way through the projects. But I'm having, I'm having a conversation, you know, on email with a lady who said, Listen, I think that's that's ridiculous, and there's I want my refund of seventy five pounds. I'm like, no problem, like have it. I'm sorry if I kind of you know, but but um, it's it's hard because I say you know it's very difficult to monetize creativity. It's like look at the great musicians, right? Here sitting mm -hmm. and they and they can't they, they can't really get him to play gigs. They can't you know, and they're hugely creative, you know, and they're one the kind of monetize that and want to try and make money off their, off their, off their craft. They want to give their creativity, their spirit to the planet and they can't do it, you know, at the moment. And I, and, and, and I mean, a lot of project, projects came up. I mean, I've been working with, on consultations with people all over the world, including, you know, New Zealand, South Africa, the States, if, you know, all of the States, all over Europe, um, you know, uh, New Zealand, I mean, a, a theater in New Zealand, you know, was, was an early project I was working on, you know, so there's all these projects, right? But I mean, Barbados, I mean, exotic projects, but I can't travel. Yeah. You know? So it's almost like this pro this process of going through, you know, or this profile that, that you, you, the TV work has given me, right? All of a sudden, I, get, I, mean, I mean, the whole world opens up, given all these projects, but I can't work on them. I can't actually physically say, I want to dedicate myself to that project, you know? And that's okay. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that I had to modify. I mean, my office, my studio here is full of physical models, right? That's how we used to work. We don't work like that anymore. It's consultations because, you know, like, and there, there would be another stage post, post whatever, not post 2022 maybe, where we will evolve again as a practice. But all I want to do is build, you know, I, I want to kind of build a lot for myself. It's, 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 I was reminded the other day, you know, people ask me, well, your house must be amazing, you know, bench seating. And, and my sister, my sister, gave me the opportunity a long time ago to actually build her house and it became a project that's ongoing and there's a steel bridge to connect. I mean, it's all kind of like just ideas and she's like, yeah, go for it. Uh, just, just go for it. You know, and recently I kind of, 
um, created this very deep 1.2 meter bounce shooting that I get a lot of abuse about on Twitter because people think bounce shooting, but it doesn't work. People don't understand. People don't understand why bounce shooting doesn't work. I don't understand them, to be quite honest, because it seems really kind of natural. It's a surface you sit on, you lie on, you can sleep on, you know, but but my sister has been a patron, kind of, you know, and allowed me to, to work. But, but someone said the other day about, you know, your house must be missing. And I'm like, well, I don't live in a, the house I designed. And he said, well, you know, the cobbler's son has no shoes. <laughs> Now, why, why, why is that? Do you think because you would then be so super critical of what you do and say, I want to change that next week? I can't afford it. I don't have the money. I can't, it's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, you know, if I, I've got it. Listen, if I had the money to do it, I would have all these, pro- I wouldn't be, I, you know, I, I can't, I would just focus, like that would be the studio project, be making models, you know, and I would be exploring that. I mean, I want to, that's, that's not a, See, my idea of a home is very different than people's idea, right? And it, on Instagram, I was I was invited to, oh, okay, through email last year, I was invited to kind of comment on what I would do if I had 220,000 pounds, okay? Because there was this person who found himself in a situation, they had 220 grand through divorce, separation, and the house was sold. This is what they had, they had no family, nothing. What would I do? What should they do? And they were thinking they should go to a university town, buy a small apartment, rent out a room so there's a constant income, you know? And I was like, I'll tell you what, I'll put this on. I, I will do a 10 minute chat on Instagram. I put it up there. And really all I was saying was, this is what I would do, right? So I'm just saying, this is what I, you can do what you want. I shouldn't really, you know, I advise you or influence you in any way. But if I had the money, I would first of all, buy myself some land without planning because it's more expensive. So agricultural land, but ideally on, you know, no, a forest, a forest, okay? Um, uh, you know, because agricultural land here is about 10 to 15,000 pounds an acre, but you get an amazing forest. You can buy forests and they're absolutely amazing, like, you know, for very cheap. Buy yourself a forest, get yourself, an, um, and then what would I do? I would then get myself a, a, a camper van, an RV, right? And start working on it. Well, that would cost me maybe 20 grand, right? And then I'd get myself a, a transparent structure where I can start to grow my, you know, foodstuffs and I'm off grid and then all the infrastructure for that, maybe add another 60, 70, 80 grand for that. And then I would start to look at the apparatus of living, as I call it, the apparatus of living. How do you bathe? How do you cook? Where do you sit? You know, cause I don't want to sit on a chair. I mean, I'm sitting on a chair, but a chair, a sit is an interrupted squat, <laughs> right? Yeah. We shouldn't be sitting on chairs. They are not, supportive of our biomechanics and what i find most perplexing is that we celebrate these you know um the designs of these chairs right yet they do not support our biome- they are unhealthy for us but you know which kind of takes me back to where my work is going in terms of why is i'm thinking about space and environment and architecture i'm thinking about the apparatus of living and i had a master's um studio in queen's university in belfast where we explored the apparatus of living you know, and you know, and what was natural and what was unnatural and why, what was the evolutionary history? Even the knife and the fork and the spoon is amazing history when you think about it and the weapon and I want to hold my meat and the cup and decorum and all of that there, you know? So you can even think about what was the kink in our evolution that took us to having sitting up there, you know, we wanted to be like the aristocrats or, you know, and, and, and like even a toilet, okay? That, that, I've been talking about toilets for a long time with my students and the throne toilet, it causes cancers, it causes IBS. We should not be, we should be squatting. And, mm-hmm. you know, those who, you know, um, see the world as a landscape to sit and, to, you know, to move around, you know, they, those are the people who are mobile, flexible, healthy, etc. So it's about healing and health, health you know. Uh, sorry, I, I got a tangent there in, in terms of your question, but my point is I, w- I don't necessarily want to build a house with three bedrooms or that. It's more of spaces to inhabit. And my work has moved to a place where I design buildings that don't, or I design rooms that cannot be labeled or without a label, like living room, bedroom, because I want to sleep maybe in the living room or I want to sleep where I, I, in the summer up there, where I, you know, on that surface, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's more about how do we inhabit the plant? How do we inhabit our environment? Of course, we need shelter, right? Interestingly enough, there's a, a guy who I follow 
Um, and he, you know, he's talking about how, you know, the evolution of, of our species, right? And the idea of the, you know, of how we, uh, how can we have evolved, right? Three and, and about the missing link and all that kind of theory and theorizing about that. And how can we evolve when we need technology to survive, right? <laughs> we need technology, we need clothing to survive, right? So, so, and then you can ask questions about, well, what created us? Who created us, et cetera, et cetera, which is a whole other tangent, right? But essentially, mm -hmm. I find it fascinating because how, how, what's our history? Like, what's our true history? Like, what, what is our, like, I mean, I can go into some tangents here, but, you know, in my reality, E doesn't equal MC squared, right? Yeah, in, yeah. In my reality, we don't rotate around the equicenter or the equatorial center of the sun, yeah. But we're pulled through the through the solar system or the universe, and we're, and it's a it's a helical universe model which we don't teach our kids, right? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, seriously, why not? You know, so you know all this, yeah. This, this is why your YouTube. I think we got a we got a, a, a challenge because you right now um, the minimalist is trending and every, on for us Netflix, but all the financial people are saying we all have too much stuff. And even what you're talking about with chairs, I, I've had guests laugh at me because they say, do you have an office chair outside? Yes, this is my office. And yeah, this yeah. office chair, yeah. Robert, you can't see it, but I can kick my feet out and yeah. do this and lean all the way back. Yeah. My living room, I don't lay on my very comfortable couch because it makes me go to sleep. So if I want to have a conversation, I have bean bags. Yeah. Now people say, why do you lay? Because I'm going to talk to you. I can have my drink. Yeah. I don't want to sleep. <laughs> you get it. And then people question me about bench seating doesn't work. But well, do you want a, a two seater and a three, like, and pay what money for something that, like, you don't, it's not, it's not comfortable, first of all. You, you know, yeah. you're born into a world that suggests that this is comfort. So sit on it. And you sit on, you might be comfortable for 10 minutes and you get up again, you go make yourself a cup of tea, you go and grab a beer, you walk around. Why am I not, it's not quite comfortable there? I'll sit on the floor. I sit on the floor. Like I sit on the floor. I like yeah. at the moment I sit, I need to, you know, and then I can, you know, I can adjust my posture and if I want to, you know, and I can, I feel my way, you know, and that's, you know, a heated floor, of course, in this part of the world, heated floors, amazing, you know, and, you know, but I think that um, it's just really interesting, you know, how, how people have different perceptions of how they want to live. And that's why I guess your home, I mean, they're not your home perfect. I was just throwing ideas out there. I didn't care if they, if, if, if it was selected or not. I didn't care if it was, you know, if they wanted to build it or not. I was pushing them. I was responding to their needs and I was giving them some, something that if they had chosen it, it would have transformed their world, but their karma never allowed them to do it. Mm. You know, their karma was not, or they're aligned for them to take on this as, a, as an opportunity. They had to, to work through the stuff in their lives or whatever and live in the same and, or this new environment that was being created for them. That was not what I was offering. And that sounds quite arrogant. And I don't mean to be arrogant or, but I just feel that, I, no, you know, okay. I don't mean to be arrogant because any, the creative process is not you anyway. It's not me as an individual. It's a kind of an energy that comes from, right? You're channeling an energy or your, you know, your antenna, right? You're an antenna for us, uh, an idea. And ideas are everywhere. You need to be open to those ideas, you know? It's really interesting talking about being open to ideas, right? Another tangent. I do, so, I do apologize. But um, no, no, no. I, I love it. Another tangent, right? So I was, I was interviewed um, by the Belfast Telegraph, which is a local newspaper, right? Um, about health and well-being. I was asked, you know, would I like, would I be up for an interview? Yes, no problem. Quite, kind of surprised because you're a local, you know, celebrity. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just me. I'm just human. I do, you know. Um, but anyway, I thought yes because I take that seriously, my health and well-being, because I want to die with my, knowing my last breath, right? I want to be healthy. I want to be fit. I don't want to be, you know. And uh, I was asked about, so I, I kind of, you know, but the stuff that I talked about or that I, I had written in my, you know, in, you know, in my, in my, there was in my dialogue was talked about the need for other experiences that were, I talked about the likes of psilocybin or the likes of, you know, ayahuasca or these, these things to, 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 to allow to open the mind, you know, I mean, that little 
open the mind. You know, it's kind of, it's important. We need to open. We need to open our minds to kind of realize that what we experience or what we see is not necessarily how life is, needs to be, or can be. If you understand what I'm saying, you know. Anyway, the, the reason why I say that is because the stuff that I find important. I talked about my uh, like the 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 my supplements, what's important to me to become para immune, so I have a strong immune system. Or the, the important things, edited out, taken out, not included. But the important things to talk about creativity. And you know, this is this is my journey. My creativity, I feel, has been harnessed and energized and supported and evolved by these practices, you know, and I have a, I'm a practicing, I've been practicing, um, I mean, I've been a yoga practitioner for, you know, 11, 11 years. I meditate, pranayama, you know, all these other practices, you know, that I feel is important to connect the spirit, to connect with self. And then the offering of your creativity is the offering, the pure offering of your spirit that is only in service to other, if you understand what I'm saying, you know? So yeah, I think, yeah. anyway, how, how do you, well, let me, let me, cause I, you kind of mentioned, I, I, I ask all my guests what a community give back that they are doing or that they want to do in the future. And you kind of talked about how money you charge people, what they should be able to afford, especially coming to someone, you know, you're coming to a creative and expert in their field. You should have some money and, and a lot more, but yeah. I want to know your what your future plan is because people write about you. Books like The Future is Faster Than You Think. People who have, you know, billion dollar, you know, uh, net worth. Yeah. And they talk about 3D homes and uh, 24 hours. And you're somebody who could say, you know what, that's great, but let's do it like this. So yes. It's Agreed. Yeah. So what is like yeah, a, okay. Where do you see the future of your give back? Okay. I like, I all like. Ultimately, all I want to do is give my creativity in service to others. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, right? Um, so I have a lot of ideas of how, I mean, loads of, I mean, loads of ideas, but I think the future of architecture is, is, is um, engineering, is fabrication, is almost pr production line manufacturing to deal with the housing issues, but to create, you know, a, a what would you say, a, a, a product, a type, a living type, a space, a, a room, a volume, right? That we can all appropriate or occupy and, and live in. I mean, you know, what's really interesting as a species or, you know, where we are all creative, right? And when, like, you know, for people who squat in buildings, right? They go to, they know how to live in those spaces. Their spirit teaches them, or I know, not teaches them, they it guides them into where they should be sleeping, where they should, how they should be, you know, are, we are, I mean, we are amazing individuals, right? Now, I say that because I, I, I would like to create product. I would like to offer product, okay, to, you know, so I have an idea for a, a building. I have, I have ideas for um, th that becomes this the, the, the teaching school, right? Now, now, teaching school, I mean, as a, as a pro, like I, I have a four year old and I think about him going to school and these buildings and I want to kind of, I, I would love to, to design and I, and I have designed that model classroom. And, but it becomes something that's engineered and it can be a philanthropist could pick it up and it can be, they, they can become a patron to, to, to their school or so I mean, it, becomes, it becomes a product, right? So it's about product, okay? But ultimately what I want to do is create a, School for of architecture, creative. I mean, all of, of creativity, right? Because I think that understands what creativity is, and can transcend the existing outdated models, right? Because kids, as I said at the start, kids are being charged ridiculous amounts of money for poor education. They're becoming debt slaves, and it's it's unethical. It's unfair, and we need we need a new model. That renders again the quote Buckminster Fuller that renders the existing model obsolete, right? So uh, I talk about an apprenticeship school, an apprenticeship school where you can learn architecture, you can learn the idea of creativity, architecture, whilst making money, whilst making money, right? Now, 
I, I set up a, a, a um, I, I, I was invited uh, during my six years and as a nomad, I was invited. And for one year, I, I went to London and I was invited to create a creative community. I spent 2012 doing that. I had 12 builders. I had to keep them busy. That was the brief. And I had a master plan for this huge site. And now it's a very successful creative community, right? Whenever I end up coming back to Belfast, I had that idea. And in this building I'm in, this is an old school from 1884, an old school building. It was for sale by auction. It was 75,000 pounds. I phoned a friend of mine who works in London. I said, here, buy this. Because, and this will be, your, you know, this is yours, but buy it. It's worth a lot more than that. And I will kind of become the custodian of it. And, 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 and then I, I will work on a project that can see this as a building without a function that can absorb any function. So it's a permanence in architecture. It, it, it does not waste resources. So it doesn't need, need to be knocked down and, re, and you know, rebuilt in another generation. But ultimately, um, it's a skill. It's, it's this model of uh, this apprenticeship, apprenticeship model of teaching. Now, and I'm not saying this, I'm going to be the head teacher and people are going to come and learn from me. I'm saying there are so many brilliant minds out there. I'm just saying, let's all gather together and let's teach. Let's, do, but by practice, by practicing, by teaching our practice, then people who will want buildings, then like government organizations will want to come to us because we're, we're an education model, because we're giving the best output, whether it's architecture, you know, product making, whatever it is, and it becomes something that's all inclusive. And, you know, it is just assists, assists in the development of humanity. You know, and I think that's, that's a, a, a model that would be great to set up and a, and a model of practicing as an architect, but also to kind of help the kids, you know, and the generations. So, and, and let me know if in, in the future you need help with uh, this. University of the People, are you familiar with it? No, I'm not. It's, and I'm, I'm going to email it to you. Okay. It is a accredited free tuition right online all online platform yeah they have even graduate school i just uh learned about it myself and i'm, I'm like free education um i paid over a hundred thousand dollars for mine <laughs> and i and i even had some paid for you know with scholarships but not enough yeah. um and, and most of that was because i had to borrow because you know and i had didn't pay it back you know interest but we would think we'd want the most educated people, right? Mm -hmm. And so for you to reach out to them and say, I have this model, I will create a course. I just wrote a course on how to travel to Africa that right. I've made it, I made it, you know, 20 bucks. Right. And it took a, a lot of time to, to put together because I wanted people to have an A to Z, whether yeah. you have been to Africa or you, had, you, you it's your first time wow. by yourself. But I think that model with University of the People would definitely yeah. work because we are the university now. <laughs> yeah, and education should be free. Yeah. Educa education was free whenever I was at university. I was getting paid to go to university. I got a, yeah. I got grants. We would queue up for a grant and then we would go to Students Union, which is our union bar. You know, whatever you know, you know, and we would sit there and we would discuss and theorize and you know, and, but we would be working and but we would there'd be a real social interaction. Now how the universities have changed. Kids can't stay in late at night because of health and safety reasons. We had a 24-hour university. We had raves in our, in our, in our, in our um, studio. Like, our studio was a party. It was a party. <laughs> and, it, you know, it was the best education. Because when you're in, you're experiencing life. And ultimately, that, that's the most important thing about going to university. You know, forget about the studies. Because you, you can, you know, you're, you, you know, they, they can't come. But it's the life, it's the people you meet. It's you know, it's you know, it's all of it, you know. And, and I think that the, the 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 existing model, I think because of of you know these, well, maybe because of where we're at with COVID and lockdowns and everything, I think that model's gone. I think because I think universities will try and keep things online, and students are going to go. You know what? Well, is this university for the people? I'm going there, you know. And yeah. I think that's really, I think that's really important. You need to stop. You know, it's. Like the kids just paying money for substandard education is a real problem. And, and you know, it's a problem because I know, you know, again, bachelors, I, I had to pay. I was a terrible student in high school. I had other things on my mind, you right. know, sports, um, girlfriends, business, yeah. I was, you know, yeah. trying to do. 
Um, but grad school, I got pulled in for a professor saying, you really know this stuff online. I only teach it out of a book. I don't even know how to build a website. And I thank Dr. Murray for letting me teach for my time and also to pay for uh, some of that education. Yeah. But that that's what that's what we need. You guys are getting a lot, those listeners. I, I, I want to do something because I don't want to give them a game overload because somebody's mind, mind just exploded. And they said, I never thought about any of this. Um, and we're going to take this offline. But I want them to know um, when you talk about your students, where can they go if they want to, you know, get the, um, the guidance and the wisdom from you? From me? I, the guy, so everything's within. What they need to do is just get on. Like I say, I would say go, you know, to everybody, you know, like graduates, instead of going, or students, instead of going on to that tertiary level education, just try, I mean, travel, but travel without an agenda. Just go. And they would say, well, I, well, I can't fly. And I'm like, get on a bicycle. Go to the port, get you know a boat somewhere. Then go to the next, just cycle somewhere until you until you can't cycle anymore, and then walk. Because I tell you what, that is your education. That is what you want to do. And then after you've done all that, then come back to me, and we will collaborate on all sorts of stuff. Because your mind will be so open, you'll be just wanting to give the universe, you know. And I mean, it's not easy though. It's not easy to do that kind of. To, but like whenever I arrived in India, you know, I I get really sick for like I was sick i was ill for about two weeks and i was thinking I need, I need to go home i need to go home but it just it was almost like a test right i need to get through and once i get through it that's whenever the you know the whole world opened up and you know if you can get through those adversities you become stronger and i think that just travel but i, I mean i'm you can get me through my website if you want to kind of you know um have a chat i mean i'm there's people who contact me all the time and and you know, I've, uh, in fact, I've got a chat with somebody who's thinking about going on to, after their A levels to do something, you know. And their folks want me to have a chat with them to kind of, you know, just just a as a bit of guidance. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'll chat. I'll do that. No problem. Give them half an hour of time. No problem whatsoever. Because the kids need to be inspired. At that age, you don't really know what you're doing. You're forced into making these decisions that aren't really your own. So I'm saying, just stop. Just stop. Just kind of, you know, just stop and think about what you're going to do and. But do not be afraid. Fear will destroy you. Fear of not going to university. Fear of not FOMO, you know, it will destroy you. Like, so just chill, Shanti. You guys have gotten the game. We're going to take this offline. Make sure you share this with somebody. Man, because even if it's just that last part that the fear will destroy you, you guys have learned something. I know. Be blessed.